I took the maximum amount of student aid I could one term. It was like three grand. Absolutely didn't need the money, but I needed like, I've already, you know, I'm going to be paying, I'm still paying it off, I'm sure. I needed a rod and two lines and a running line and eight tips. And, you know, I wanted the VersaTip kit that had all the tips in it. And that was 200, 250 bucks or something. You know what I mean? It was the big barrier to entry for a lot of people at that point. Now with, you know, a Commando Smooth and one tip, you could fish the McKenzie all summer as a swing angler and just have that on a spool. Stop now and raise your hand if you've ever been that person back in college. This is episode 163 of the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. We'll help you on your fly fishing journey with classic stories covering steelhead fishing, fly tying, and much more. Hey, how's it going today? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. We just opened a brand new online store and have some merch for you to check out. There's some uh, some coffee cups, some uh, trucker caps, uh, lots of good stuff. So head over to uh, wetflyswing.com slash truck to check out the new, uh, the new hats and support the show. James Millard from OPST is back to dig into some of the new uh, Pure Skagit products and to talk a little about uh, dry fly fishing. We hear about a great floating tip for the Skagit line, a killer spay rod for trout uh, that's super light, and the uh, best-selling steelhead fly for skating. This is uh, James's number one go-to foamy, foamy hair pattern. Uh, if you've been loving the podcast, it'd be great if you can head over to wetflyswing.com slash love and leave a quick rating and review. This is a brand new page and uh, real easy to check it out. Before we get started, I wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsors. SoFly Gear, headed up by 17-year-old James Carlin of the U.S. Youth Fly Fishing Team, has a buttery, soft, quick-drying apparel line that I've been loving. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash SoFly and support James and the podcast today. The Fly Fishing and Tying Journal has an exceptional fall edition that's out right now. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash FTJ to support the great work Craig and the gang have created just for you. Again, that's wetflyswing.com slash FTJ and also wetflyswing.com slash S-O-F-L-Y. So without further ado, here's James Merlard from OPST. How's it going, James? Not bad. How are you doing today? Good, good. Yeah, we were, yeah. Uh, you know, as far as we still, we're still in COVID. It was funny. We were kind of just chatting there, talking about how we did our first episode back in 2018, way, yeah. way before COVID. And now we're, yes. we're in COVID. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll talk about, you know, with OPST, how things are going and, and all of that. Yeah, maybe you can just start us off there. How, how has that changed? You know, how are you guys doing things differently than, than you were two and a half years ago? Well, I mean, everybody, I think, is doing something drastically different from two and a half years ago. But, um, you know, there's regulations in place or there were regulations in place to where, like, there's only certain people that could, um, we or, you know, be in the office at a, a certain time. We certainly aren't traveling. Um, mm -hmm. and no shows. We're not running any shows this year. Probably not even in the 2021 Um especially looking at numbers and how COVID numbers have seemed to be rising in mm. a lot of places. It's just a lot of risk with the travel. And so, you know, if I can't quarantine myself, I won't go see some of our older ambassadors like Ed Ward or Dave no. Tuskowski. Um, yeah, they, they had a, they had a thing going here on the Barul not too long ago, but just because I would have had to leave on short notice, it just didn't seem safe. And so we've been pretty cautious just on, you know, trying to listen to science on that and figure out what is best for us moving forward. As a company, we're doing fine. Yeah, um, you know, good. the, the uh, industry saw a boost in sales over COVID. I think a lot of people, because they couldn't go anywhere, we're just staying locally. And if you've, you've heard a lot of things of just outdoor industry in general, the kayak companies, we went to try to buy some cheaper kayaks because our kids are getting into kayaks more just on lakes and stuff here in Utah where there's a lot of them. And man, there was just nothing to buy because everybody had kind of sold them out. I went to float the click attack and didn't have an oar stop for my, uh, my one man raft. And, oh, wow. um, you know, you can just run into sportsman's usually and get, a generic or stop that'll work for a trip and is a great backup. And man, I went to two or three different stores. Yeah. <laughs> Finally found like the last one that 
somehow someone had probably an employee had stuck behind somewhere that wanted to buy for themselves and I snatched it up. So, <laughs> but I'm um, in general, just, you know, we've been more cautious with our travel. Um, you know, we're, you know, not going to be doing a lot of shows. I went, um, and did, you know, two weeks worth of filming with some of our ambassadors recently on the grand Ron Kinsley Scott, Ricky Davidson, and then another friend of theirs, Derek. But, um, you know, that we hadn't been around each other and then we'd been isolated. I'd been isolated for about a week before I saw them and then they had as well. So we do, you know, a lot of these weird, you know, isolate, not isolations, but yeah. trying to be as around as few people as possible. I haven't gone out to eat in since February. No kidding. Yeah. No. Yeah. It happened right as I was fishing with these folks last year, um, 2019. I was fishing with Kinsey and Ricky. It was our last time together before COVID. It was, you know, I came home the day after the first COVID death from um, the West Coast. I drove home like March 1st or something. I think we lost our first person officially on the 29th of February or 30, whatever it was, last day of February. So everything kind of changed from there. Yeah. I mean, you know, things have kind of normalized a little bit more now. We we can have. Um, so you do it all from Utah? I know I do it all from Utah or my home in uh, Eugene, Oregon. Oh, that's right. Um, I have a place there. Yeah. And an old rugby buddy that lives there that is a radiologist that, or radiology technician that um, works there locally. And he just, him and his dog stay there while I'm gone. And I just move okay. in and out when, yep. <laughs> when it's time i just got back um we were on like i said i was with kinsley and ricky and other folks on the uh, grand ron for five days and okay. then went down to um the willamette valley caught one steelhead on the willamette and you then did. went down to the rogue um oh wow met up with uh, dave flatterty from uh left coast spay i don't know yep. if you've heard of dave yeah, yeah, you yeah, know I dave have. i have um he is great um he does some I call it modeling. He does some casting for us and stuff. I'll film him because he's an amazing caster. But um, uh-huh. we went down there for a few days. And then um, now I'm back here synthesizing all in Utah. I'm back here synthesizing all the media that we've gathered while I was down there to kind of plan out some social. And mm. I'll be heading back in November, I think, too. Gotcha. Once it's been like, you know, we got to be careful. My kids and wife are all in school. My wife's a school teacher here in Utah and the kids, we, they open schools here. So, um, oh, you know, really? they go four days a week. Oh, well, yeah. So they're, they're actually, they're in school in person. They're in school four days a week. Yeah. And today, like Friday, they're not. Gotcha. Today. They gotcha. just sleep in and huh. do at, at, at home learning for yeah. the rest of the afternoon. Yeah. That's cool. Did you do any, um, did you do any dry fly fishing here when, when you're out for steelhead? I did not because the weather changed, but Kinsley got a real nice fish. I'm very curious. It had a, this nice wild hen that had a tag on her, uh-huh. and we're really curious just to see where this fish is from. There's a little bit of a bet going. I'm, I'm calling Snake River fish. We don't know because it's yeah. a Columbia River trip, and that's one of the fun things about catching some of those fish. But yeah, she's, well, she's an ambassador, so she's obviously an amazing angler. As as is her boyfriend Ricky, the um, other ambassador for us from Montana there, but. Um, they pretty much fished our Skagit heads and floating tips. Um, you know, notably the 10 foot 75 grain and the 12 foot, uh, 90 grain SHS floating tips the whole time. Even if they weren't skating, they were throwing wets or something. This just on a dry line. I threw a light tip. <laughs> <laughs> I threw a light tip. I had gone a wild steelhead in a while. That fish I caught on the Willamette was obviously a hatchery fish and I only got, a very brief encounter before you see he didn't fight until i grabbed him by the tail obviously and then he went bananas and i just got a tail picture when i wanted to prove to my wife that i could still catch fish but (laughs) yeah it's gonna be a you know i i skated a little on the rogue it was just high bright weather and kind of kind of called for it but on the ron the the one day it was skaty weather was the only day and then it just kind of the weather went, as I say, a little fear and loathing on us. And we had a day that we couldn't float. It was blowing so hard. We were afraid we'd get blown down to the launch a little too quickly and in the raft. But yeah, some dry fly stuff is happening and best definitely in November. Like if the weather is conducive for it, I'm going to, I mean, sink tip season's coming, whether we like it or not. So I'm going to dry line fish as much as possible. And a couple new skater flies that I've kind of tied up on some tubes that were looking really nice on the rond that I'm going to keep fishing when I come back in November. But yeah, the dry line and, 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 and dry fly scene there was 
really what caught all the steelhead. The and we even rose a brown or a, I'm sorry, a bull trout. <laughs> Ricky, oh, wow. it'll be in our video. Rick, well, the fish, not the actual. Yeah. He was That's cool. a quarter mile down the river, but yeah, he rose a bull trout on a no kidding on a skater. So we try to stay as dry line as we can in the summer because man, it's yeah a lot of it's a lot of a grind in the winter sometimes when you're fishing day in and day out with big heavy sink tips and lead eyed flies. It's nice I to know. throw a dry fly in a and a dry line a little bit so yeah what is skaty weather what what is what is skaty you know what's uh, you know i like it when it's kind of i mean i guess that's just subjective you know some folks and it's different on every river where fish will move or not move for a fly right but i mean i think it's more about water temperature but i like the clouds where that derek and i this fellow that we fish with the good friends of kinsley and ricky um we talk about this it's, it's uh just when the clouds kind of are there and not there, you know, they're just, especially in Canyon water where you don't have a lot of sky exposure. And so you do get a lot of shadows and then light shadows and light that are kind of intermittent throughout the day. To me, that just feels like a good time to chug a fly or skate a fly. I don't do a lot of chugging where you see like the Scott Howe flicking the rod and popping the fly. Yeah. I don't do a lot of that anymore. When I think it's, you know, in, in choppier water or something like that, I might, but yeah, but that's what I think of. But so like, that's not what really happened on the rond. It was just, those fish are a little different. They like consistency over time. And so four or five bright days, you know, day three, four, you'll start moving fish and then, you know, all vice versa. If you get four, you know, then when the, when that changes, forget about it. That's what happened to us. They, they caught them on the last good day and then it changed. And then no more steelhead were caught, um, just bull trout. But oh, okay. um, I think probably by day five with the crappy weather, those fish would have activated again and maybe been able to be skated. Some folks will say that no sun on the water some what is the optimal skating weather. Some guys are like, well, I huh. like a bright day so they can see the fly. Bright yep. days and shadows are always kind of my favorite. So that's why like, I like the North Umclaw for skating because it's you – know, got a lot of shadows regardless of the bright days like there's places like williams creek complex right there by that bridge mm. that goes around the corner in the log it may never see sun in the fall hmm. so even though there's a bright blue sky and so i think that just gives the fish a little bit more mystery as to what's going on because i think that might be why some steelhead react to a dry fly i don't know that it's always the case but i think some of it's just the the curio the cat and the curiosity kind of a thing as yeah, opposed to exactly. other times when you're like on the on the rogue in the very beginning of the season fishing the salmon fly hatch and you hear somebody caught a steelhead that yeah. sipped a salmon fly right. it's never happened to me but it happens and that's a fish that's just remembered it was a smolt at one point and just went through a you know went through auto auto drive and ate that thing yeah, yeah. so yeah. but i think more in the fall you've got fish that are getting troutier right that's the that's yeah. the an October caddis right or out. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. And that's what all they were using on the Ron, pretty oh, much really? just October caddis style imitations. And that's what that's what Kinsley's fish was on, yeah. Did you, uh, the, on the episode way back in uh, episode 29 when you were on, you um, <laughs> you, you talked about eating <laughs> what? Eating the bug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did no, you, we, did, have you eaten the more bugs? We it, but nobody ate one. <laughs> <laughs> I, it came up once or twice because they were around, but um. Not not as prevalent as they should have been. Again, we had a lot of wind. Um, the weather was pretty bad. Um, you know, it was low 40s when we woke up in the morning. So oh, those wow. bugs were all kind of tucked up underneath our Airbnb eaves, just kind of cr trying to come inside. And what was that like? So you're on the you're on the Grand Ron. Um, I mean, did you do? Is this like the the multi day float trip? No, no, no. That was that was. Um, I think it's a little higher. I think Troy Dentman was running oh, okay. that while we were there. And Deck Hogan had just got off his trip. I just talked to Deck before yeah. um, on my way out because I saw he had finished and he caught, boy, <laughs> he caught some nice fish. Oh, did so he? I wanted to check. Yeah, he caught a couple nice. Looks like, and I don't quote me, don't quote me, yeah. but I believe he said um, his personal best. No kidding. So I don't know. You'd have to ask him, but I yeah. don't, I have to go back to my messages. I just, I just wanted to see how. How they had done and if all those skaters and mothers I had tied were a good idea or not. And mm -hmm. so turned out they were, but just not for me. Gotcha. <clears throat> gotcha. Okay. But yeah. So that's what we like to do. We like to try to do things on the surface. It's just a little bit more dynamic of a presentation. You don't always have to just throw it downstream in and lead your fly to the bank. You know, although that does work quite well in some 
situations skating dry flies you know when you got a nice unilateral current flowing off each bank from mm-hmm. bank to bank you know you can throw some downstream in and give it a little push but you'll see in our video there'll be times where kinsley or ricky have their arm extended way out into the river with their rod tip way out and so they're pushing their fly toward or their their rod tip towards the opposite bank as opposed to their own bank leading the fly and so that's just kind of keeping it fluttering in some of these seams where the fish hold you know you got oh, yeah. places that are super seamy i mean imagine having a, you know obvi- i don't know when the last time you were on the soul duck but imagine yeah. having to skate the soul duck right because all those weird seams and swirls and stuff so you can't just keep your it's not just a step cast kind of a presentation there's a little bit more thought yeah you're not just swinging flies you certainly can and then you know the grease lining thing is the complicated way to swing flies where you're giving them a slow broadside presentation which is a little bit difficult, but um, with practice, especially with a shorter skagit head, you just kind of steer the back of that head like a rudder. I'll kick it each direction I wanted to go. If I wanted to go inside, which when I say that, I mean towards my bank. Yep. I and maybe that's a helpful way for cut near people to visualize it. But I'll, when I'm, I'll kick the back of the head inside, or I'll kick the back of the head outside, and I'm just trying to keep the fly in a seam, or I want to move it from a seam to another seam. I think the North Umqua or other rivers, Rogue, yeah. a lot of rock, a lot of seams, fish are holding on them or behind them. So, you yeah. know, it's a funner way to, more fun way to, I don't know if funner is a word, yeah. more fun way to, <laughs> <laughs> more fun way to swing flies for steelhead, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Some people hate it. Some yeah. people find it maddening. It's a, yep. it can be an exercise in controlling panic a little bit too. When you see a fish move and you got to drop a loop, if you drop loops or if you got to just wait like I do, because I have a click pull reel that doesn't require a loop drop. Oh, so or you don't do loops. Do you do loops? I don't. I don't drop yeah. a loop at all. Um, not at all. And I do set a little bit too. So not your Bassmaster chum and ch- salmon try to snap it set, but it's more of a tightening of the rod towards my bank, oh, okay. uh, whichever bank I'm on or yeah. whichever bank makes more sense. If I'm, you know, kind yeah. of in the middle of the river, I'll set wherever. But it's just kind of tightening, and I want to try to encourage. This is a Rob Crandall thing from his video, but yeah. you know, I know a few other people that have done it that I learned it from, but. Um, you turn that rod towards the bank and you're kind of encouraging that hook to kind of go to the scissors of the dish's mouth, hopefully, and get that really good hook up. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's, that might be a swag. That might be a bunch of our sure. scientific wild ass guesses, but yeah, you know. gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. So. But yeah, you know, that's the fun way to do things. I mean, it's going to be December and sink tip season before we know it. So oh, yeah. let's, yeah. let's fish dry lines while we can. That's right. So are you going to be fishing dry line? So you usually fish it in through, um, well, I guess depending on where you're at, if you're on the Grand Ronde, how, how long are people fishing that river? I think they can fish it into December. You know, I'll yeah. fish it just a lot, one last little time in the beginning of November, if it all works out correctly. Um, you know, it just depends. I know some people that summer still had fish a little too late in the season for some. I mean, farther east you go, um, a little the later you can go, obviously. But I see January, February fish. Guys are posting on yeah. websites that are pretty colored color. up that might be spawning or really thinking yeah. about it. And I think that those are times you should maybe give them a break. I mean, it's January, February. you got winter fish in other places to, to target, you know, but – um, yeah, some guys are going to December, like on the rogue and I don't know, man, I just, I feel like no judgments of course, but I just feel like that might be pushing it a little bit and, you know, we, we've got so few fish and we're going into that new, that new weather pattern on the West coast. We're going to that La Nina now that's supposed to cool the oceans off and give our fish a bit of a break and mm-hmm. give us some recovery. I think we need to be cautious in that, yeah. in that period, right. To make sure that we do experience some recovery. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Totally. So is that yeah. when you think about you we mentioned a few you mentioned the click attack too is is yeah. that river any good for uh, skating? Uh yeah, yeah, people skate it depends on the water, you know, they have a creek upstream that when it gets hot hot and yeah, forget what glacier it is, but melts and it all comes down and turns that river into chalk and yeah. it'll still fish, you know, we've got guys that were fishing our new commando groove myself, um, our new employee Wade Leplo took a real nice fish when the water had kind of started to change color um, with a, a commando groove and a really light sink tip and a larger fly, not a big, big fly, but you know, we've all got, you got ways you can fish that river without it, but you can't, shouldn't really, I mean, I wouldn't personally skate it with really low vis, but now the, the things are starting to cool off that water clarity. It'll go from six inches of visibility to like two weeks later, it'll be 
20 feet, yeah. <laughs> you can't, you can see, you know, be gin clear. That's when you should skate. And October caddis are a great option there. Use a bigger wire hook. Those fish are a little bigger. Um, yep. But yeah, there, there's something else. We had my boss, James Awase, was fishing with us this uh, this summer, early in the summer when it was hot, hot. And we were very early in the morning out and all kind of chit chatting at the head of this run while he was just swinging. And, you know, he was the odd man out. I think both of us were fishing. Wade and I were fishing uh, intermediate heads because of the watercolor. He was fishing a floating, you know, the original commando head with a, with, I think it was a 10 foot sink tip, 10 foot OPSC sink tip. And he, I don't even know if he had his whole head out. Um, and the fish was in the upper end of the run as it would be in the morning, you know, getting, it was a moving fish and it clobbered him. And all we hear is his reel just go, wah, that hearty perfect just mm-hmm. lit up. And by the time we all kind of got, he didn't stand a chance. Like there's nothing he could have, the, 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 it must have been how the fish ate the fly. Like it was either going to hook itself or not. Yep. There was nothing we could have done with that startup, but. He probably had 30 feet of running line out when it was all said and done. And he didn't even have the whole head up. Yeah. So that fit, these fishers, so they're just, it's, it's funny how different they are. They can be from river to river, you know, but that's the, that's the click at that fish. They're just rambunctious and thick and yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. It's not a bad skating river as long as you've got the conditions. And again, I think that, did you have Todd Hirano on the show? Yet? Uh, not yet, not yet. But I've been yeah. I've been talking to him. Yeah, I've been talking right to Todd and uh, Adrian. I hope hopefully. Okay, yeah. Adrian's great too. Yeah. Uh, what An is amazing the, tire? What is the groove? Uh, is that mainly for so, winter or summer? Uh, that's for well. I mean, traditionally we think of intermia. So the groove. Let's just back up on that. Is a new newer product of ours. It's a um, OPSC commando head that. The rear third floats, but the front two thirds is an intermediate sink rate. So, <clears throat> think you know, one point five inches a second, one inch a second, something yep. depending on the current flow, obviously. But just nice and slow presentations. It slows things down. Doesn't necessarily get us a ton deeper. Now it will if you're trying to get deeper and you're adding a heavier sink tip and if you're slowing things down. You're obviously going to get a little bit extra depth. But it really is more about slowing things down and. You know, like uh, other products like the Fist, you know, yeah. that came out from there. That was thought of as a winter line, right? Because it's for yep. getting slow and deep. And so we just keep getting more and more feedback from folks that are catching steelhead on the Deschutes, catching, you know, I've witnessed these things working on trout in the summer, winter. Um, just anytime you want to slow down your presentation, they're, they're a really good tool okay. for your toolbox we thought of them as a winter line just in general because you know that's what everybody thinks of intermediates is yep. low and slow right and you know caleb one of our ambassadors used to call it a, a set it and forget it line so you throw it and you don't have to do a lot of controlling you kind of set your swing angle mm-hmm. and then just let it go and it's really good in a lot of situations so winter time think about like how what when would you want to slow your fly down in the winter there's so many super cold water really high water really low water um there's just a bunch of different you know low water on the skagit let's use for an example the fish aren't in the heads and tails of the runs they're in the gut mm-hmm. the gut on the skagit <laughs> in some of these runs is 15 12 feet deep eight feet deep and you got fish that will move but you're not necessarily trying to get your fly eight feet deep you can't no but you want but the swing your swing window is so narrow it's just the gut so you only have two three four seconds before your fly is out of the zone but if you're swinging your intermediate head or that commando groove through there it goes slower so you have your flies exposed to the fish longer summer applications where you have a place like the click it's at that goes out overnight or you're trying to chase that one clear water bubble downstream and it moves faster than you do and now you're in muddy water and you got two days left in the trip Put on an intermediate head, a very light sink tip or an intermediate tip. That's another new thing we're coming. Hmm. We've got intermediate tips that are on their way that we're going to start demoing just to see how they work out with our stuff. But this should be great. But in general, like there's definitely you know, structure, fishing trout and structure and moving water, smallmouth and structure and moving water. And you want to keep your fly in front of the structure longer and for your strip. An intermediate will help um, streamer fishing obvious uh, applications to keeping your fly at depth especially like i take it and fish it on the wood river for trout in southern oregon because they're under cut banks and so i'll slap the other bank where i don't think there are fish with a big streamer and let it swing to my bank where i think there's fish 
then I strip it back. But by stripping it back with an intermediate and a light sink tip, it stays deep. It doesn't come up. And, it, you know, those fish that are out on those cut banks don't swim up at the top. That's where the velocity is. They're down in the bottom, you know, inching around with the sculpin and the dace and, and keep my fly down there longer. So, I mean, I can go on and on on that. You know, it was kind of stereotyped, I think, just industry well, not our line, but intermediate heads in general, intermediate lines in general, just kind of stereotyped as deep lines or wind or cold weather lines. And they're great for that, but they're also great for other applications. Riffles, big riffles were summer steelhead are using, using them as a velocity cover or a bubble curtain cover. You can't throw a full floating line through that without it just ripping through there oh, yeah. or, you know, so, I mean, it's got some, you know, obviously there's the, the question of should you be sinking really deep in the summer if a fish will come up or whatever, but you know, that's a whole different story. story. Like for us, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely finding their way into a lot of our other fall right now. I mean, imagine when the rivers bump and it's still summer steelhead season, you know what I mean? The fish start acting a little bit more sink tippy. I call it, you know, mm -hmm. they're a little deeper. You got to get, you know, intermediate heads great there. So. Gotcha. so that's the groove. And then what is the, I mean, you guys are known for your commando head, which is kind of a shorter head. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. What, what, so I guess maybe take it back to that for a second here, just the summer steelhead, uh, like dry fly. So what, what would be the line you would use if you're just fishing, like you want to skate? Yeah. So I'm going to use our original commando head, um, which is a full floating skagit head, nice and short, um, has a, a lot of weight in the front and it's heavier per foot than other heads that are longer. So it's got a lot of punch to it. Um, and then I'm going to add what we use are these SHS commando floating tips and they're, they vary. We have a shorter one for, you know, seven and eight weight, um, single handed rods and stuff like that. That's like seven and a half feet at 55 grains. But then we start going into 10, 12 and 14 feet, um, with a taper. So, and they all have a taper, even that short one, but I mean, so you got a 10 foot, 75 grain floating tip or a 12 foot, 90 grain floating tip or a 14 foot, 110 grain floating tip that you'd add to the front of a Skagit head. Um, they have a little bit more mass than like our micro tips and they got a, obviously a stronger core. So they're, you know, SHS, SHS actually stands for steelhead salmon, but, mm. um, and so I'm adding those on They're they're tapered. And so I'm getting presentation out of them and I'm getting, um, a little bit more turnover for a bigger, like some of these flies I ended up tying on tubes were too big. They're, you know, bomber sized. Some I probably wouldn't skate right now. Yeah. I just like to skate a little smaller, right? This time of year. But so that's a nice kind of a stop gap. You know, I've got the, the ambassadors do a lot of, um, touch and go style casting with these. Cause when you have a, you know, let's say I'm fishing a 375 grain commando head, which is 15 feet. Now I add a 12 foot floating tip. What is that? That's, I don't know, almost 30 feet, right? So yeah. it's close to, that's close to some of, I mean, shorter, but still close to some of the lengths of what some of these shorter Scandi lines you see has a front taper. The weight isn't distributed quite as well, or quite not, I wouldn't say as well, but quite the same, yeah. you know, it's not exactly bullet shape, but, and then, I mean, we even have some crazy stuff going on. Our, our uh, this is a really fun one that, um, we've been chatting about in the office, our European customers, we have a lot of European support uh -huh. for our products with our distributors, Baltic fly fisher out of Germany, but man, they'll take that commando head and flip it because our commando heads are weight forward, meaning that the, the end that you connect to your running line is the thinner end of the head yeah. and the end that you connect to your tips, the thicker end will flip the script on that and flip them around. And now you have something that you can add a front taper to and they all, they call it scanned it and they, huh. um, they do a lot of, and they, they came out a couple of summers ago. As a matter of fact, uh, Stuart and Celia, um, Lasse, her husband came out and they showed us how they do it and really? it looks great. Yeah. It cast well. I mean, it's just like, you know, I mean, think about throwing a rage. You can do both, uh, Skagit cast and a Scandi cast if you would like. Yeah. I tend to just Skagit cast because my Scandi casting over the years is, yep. Dec declined <laughs> yeah, yeah me too me too is the rage yeah. similar to uh kind of similar to what you guys have with the commando head no no the no. rage is a longer line it's like a 34 foot 32 yeah. i can't remember don't quote me sorry yeah. guys That's in airflow longer. if i get it wrong but yeah. it's a longer it's just a really aggressive scandy i guess but it's a really aggressive short scandy boy i'll come out to the the green river here in utah and those fish are humbling you there's 
the A section has something like 20,000 trout per mile. It's ridiculous. And you'll see them all up on the bank because everyone's floating down the middle of the river casting to them. And it's, it's a fish. It's a humbling fishery. I mean, with 20,000 fish a mile, you think you're going to, you mean, you're going to find Dang, one dumb one, but 20, there, there's not any real stupid fish huh. here because they are pressured quite heavily. When we were there, there were, I think the quote was 92 boats in front of us what? and 64 behind us just wow. in the A section. So are you it's seeing, manic. Are you seeing uh, like boats like boats floating by you all day? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Tons it's a nonstop. What you have to do if you're wade fishing, you just kind of have to stop and let the group go by um, and then – keep fishing your spot or move down or you know this is and it was worse this year than in than most oh, yeah. you know it's just only yeah. during the the warmer times like right now it's probably there probably ain't anybody out there right now which is another reason i came back to utah this time of year is because i want to shoot some more trout space stuff and now a quick word from our sponsors the Fly Fishing and Tying Journal has a great fall edition that's out right now. You can find Lucas Stevens, who visits Winston Fly Rods in the fall edition, for an insider look and a rare interview with Ted Leeson. Patrick Wall pays homage to Harry Lemire's tight in hand Atlantic salmon flies. Boots Allen takes us to the pond with a master class in steel water. Dennis Dobble also travels to Scotland in search of uh, salmon. Good to have him uh, him on here. I'd love if you could stop by uh, right now and uh, just press pause. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash FTJ and subscribe to the magazine. You'll get that issue delivered to your door. That's wetflyswing.com slash FTJ. We're also supported by SoFly Gear, led by Chief Apparel Guru and Team USA Youth Fly Fishing member, James Carlin, who has a great clothing line that you're definitely going to love. SoFly's mission is to produce clothes that look good, perform well, and can be worn on and off the water. Plus, uh, most importantly, are manufactured uh, with under sustainable methods. They do this with bamboo. Bamboo is a, this shirt has a great mixture. I've been wearing it, it all around. It dries quick. It stays warm. It's soft. Uh, it's, it's good to go. Pretty amazing stuff. You got to check it out. So um, if you can, you can head over to wetflyswing.com slash SoFly and get started today. Uh, that'll help support uh, James and the podcast in one shot. That's wetflyswing.com slash S-O-F-L-Y. Okay, back to the show. What do you guys, let's touch on the, the trout just for a second here. What, sure. What do you guys offer? So with trout, I mean, obviously mm-hmm. you've got the same things. You've got trout, kind of the commando stuff. Do, what do you offer yeah. for more like, what would you say if somebody's dry fly fishing for trout? Do you have something, a line that would fit that? Um, you know, that's a tough one with Skagit, but we do. We have a Commando Smooth, which is the integrated system that we have. And it doesn't have – the tips aren't integrated, but it's just a uh, Commando head that has an integrated running line that comes out of the back of it. The whole thing is one piece, so there is no connection inside of the line. It's a 100-foot line. Well, it's not quite 100 foot, but it's essentially a 100-foot line that just has our Skagit head in the front. Okay. From 150 grains up to 300, you throw, again, that floating tip on the end of that. Um, and you can do some dry fly fishing and here's the kind of dry fly fishing I'm doing. Like think salmon fly season, absolutely rogue yeah. shoots. We'll do one handed and two handed. You know, I poked my ear pretty good as a kid on the shoots trying to learn the bow and arrow cast, yep. um, because I put it right behind my ear and let it go and went think. So thank God for barbless hooks, but, <sighs> or at least pliers. But, um, <laughs> you know, what we'll do now is we'll go to the downstream side of that brush line that everybody's trying to bow and arrow cast in and just make upstream cast with the commando smooth. Both one-handed rods and um, light two-handed rods is what I started. I actually don't use one-handed rods much to do this because I have these nice light two-handed rods from OPST that do a great job at this. But, um, you know, throw that salmon fly presentation upstream and just kind of strip the line back, give it a little wiggle here and there where they need it. And most of the time my fish don't eat a wiggled dry fly like that, but they'll eat that. Um, We do a lot of hopper dropper with it. If you're on your hands and knees at Yamsey Ranch in Southern Oregon doing tr- cripple wing trichos, you might not want a spay line in general. Yeah. Probably need a double taper dry fly line for stuff like that. But it's nice. I would say it covers like 60. Yeah. For me, 100% gotcha. of my dry fly fishing. I'm the last guy in the trout crew to go to the dry. They're, fly, they're like, Millar, dude, just p- come on. They're obviously not eating pupa anymore. And I'm like, oh, I just want to swing them. So yeah. that's just my my sickness. But 
you know, for I would say 100% of what I do, oak hair, caddis and riffles and hopper, dropper, dry fly stuff. I mean, we leave a chubby tree in the Willamette Valley. We leave a chubby Chernobyl tied on the dry fly rod all year, right? Or yeah. all, 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 all trout season. That kind of stuff is what we're doing with it. Gotcha. Um, so you're, so yeah, you're... it's got a nice mendable running line. You know, it's not like you're not going to be on your hands and knees again doing 30 foot flick men's upstream, you know, with the fly fishing team, but it's, Yep. functional for that sort of thing so gotcha. so it's, it's not been for a really light, popular product yeah it's not for the real light light uh, small size 20 dry fly action you're not gonna i mean using... you know if it's in riffly water sure but if it's in the glass clear you know gin yep. gin clear spring creek kind of stuff you know yeah yeah. Well, what's that two-handed not. what's that lightweight opst two-handed rod you're talking about well we have a, a whole series from uh, we, we call them our micro skagit rods and our pure skagit rods they've been in development they had been in development we released them uh last october um so they're about a year in now but um yeah there are two categories there's the the micro which is the three four and five weights which are very unique and then the pure skagit lineup which is six through nine weight right now we do have a prototype 10 that we've been playing around with but we're not sure if there's that much need for a 10 weight out there. We'll mm-hmm. see. But um, I love the idea of a 10 weight personally. But mm-hmm. um, so the micro, the, 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 what we were just talking about, is Ed's kind of vision of a lighter rod. You know, when he went to start fishing some of these smaller creeks for smallmouth, bigger rods just weren't cutting it. And he put, you know, switch rod handles on one handed rods. And that idea is what spawned the three, four, and five micro series. Um, if you look at them, they're short, just in general. All of our rods are in the shorter side. You know, they're, we don't have anything over 12 feet. Um, but the mm-hmm. micros, the three weights, nine foot, nine inches, the four weight is 10 foot, and the five weight is 10 foot, four inches. So um, short, but the other unique thing is the upper grip is more like a one-handed rod and it has still the lower hmm. switch rod grip. So they're so light. All of them are light. Like I hand guys the eight weight and they're like, this is the lightest eight weight oh, yeah. I've ever held. And they are pretty darn light. Um, but the, the one at, or the, the, the micro series rods are really, really light. And so we, I myself especially do a lot of one handed casting, sp- Skagit or spare, or, you know, touch and go style casting with these rods. So that handle really makes it nice to switch. If, yeah. some, if you don't need to make a two-handed cast in a small river that I, I just I just don't think you need to sometimes and so I did a lot of work with this 993 weight on the upper Willamette you know think Oak Ridge area right oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> I hooked a bull trout up there that I had to I had to slack line it was pretty it was pretty large and I don't like to harass I wasn't I wasn't targeting him and I don't like to harass him too much so I mean we were crushing with that thing little micro sculpzillas and stuff up on the upper willamette hills creek area the floor weight was my mckenzie rock right. <laughs> i mean they're 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 really fun so so is that like a so is a three weight a nine foot nine inch three weight is that kind of like a say maybe a, a longer like a 10 or you know a nine foot uh, five weight trout rod like a mm-hmm. single well that was that's the fun thing about these and that's what i was getting to but glad you brought that up it's a great question they're not our 993 weight will throw like a three or four weight oh wow overhand line our yeah nine uh, or our 10 foot four weight will throw a four or five weight overhand line and then our five weight i find and this might be i have to talk to wade in our office he's a little bit more in tune to overhand lines as he was an overhand guide for longer than i probably overhand casted he's a pretty good overhand caster but i tend to put a little heavier line on the five i try to go like a maybe a five six or even the seven weight guy throw a 250 grain commando head on that five and that's what i put on a seven weight single head rod so I don't know if I would call it a seven weight single handed rod, but six for sure. Yeah. So they're really close. They're not that traditional. Like when you buy a, a two weight and where it's a five weight, you know, yep. or you buy a yeah, five yeah. weight where it's that's a seven really, weight, you know, yeah. it's not, that's not what we were aiming for in the no. micro series. And that, you know, that five weight gives you a lot of wiggle room. You yeah. could very well, you know, the very first version of that rod actually had the double well two handed grip. And then Ed was like, no, no, we want to do the single grip on that. So we switched it. But originally, I, I do have the original version with the two-handed. And I can fish that on, like, on the Rogue for steelhead. 
oh, yeah. in the summer gotcha. because they, you know, half pounders for sure. But huh. geez, I've caught adult fish that are 24 inches at a six foot single handed rod. I have no problem with. So. so are you casting and can you just pick up that, that rod and make a overhand cast with it if you wanted to? You can. Yeah. If you have a, I mean, if you have an overhand line on it, you could absolutely, I'm going to, I'm going to put a six weight over or a overhand nymphing line on the five weight. Um, not this weekend, but next weekend and go do a little nymph fishing just cause a, I haven't in a while and I'm not sure that I even know how anymore, but B just as, you know, cast this overhead a little bit more. And I just happen to have a six weight nymphing line lying around that I either need to chop up into something cool or use as is. And so we're going to go, you know, just to know what these things can do overhead is good because we do have a lot of diverse questions people are like can i switch this from an overhand rod to a you know switch rod and or two-handed style rod we don't call them switch rods because right yeah, that's kind of going away good. well i mean i just don't know what it is anymore yeah yeah it sounds like <laughs> it's a short two-handed rod you know it's, uh, yeah it's in i just uh, a little bit ago had uh, <clears throat> tom morgan rod smith's uh, matt and joel mm-hmm. and they talked about how Tom Morgan's vision with his trout right, were for trout. You know, they were specifically for trout and l- literally not to even cast more than 40 feet or so because that's sure. he, he wanted the feel. When you guys look at what you have going, obviously you're in this niche of the micro of the spay, you know. I mean, but how mm-hmm. far out do you expand your line? Are you guys going to keep expanding out into things or are you going to maybe contract? I mean, where are you guys going in the next five years, do you think? Um, you know, there's always room to grow and improve your product, but with the commando head, I mean, it's just one of those things that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, we yeah. can't, we can't make that any better necessarily. We do always have conversations on new lines and where we're going and, you know, pure Skagit is our motto. It's our logo. Yeah. We will keep it as Skagit as we can moving right. forward. I don't know how much room yeah. Skagit has, but I think there's going to be times that Ed solves the delicate dry fly situation. You know, yeah. I'm sure he's working on it behind the scenes. I don't, I don't right. know. But, you know, I, I think that we're within five years, we're going to see, A, you know, just an expansion of more and more beginners seeing the potential of single-handed Skagit on one-handed rods, which is again where our, you know, our customers really focus. As you know, we're known for the steelhead, we're known for the salmon, the big casts, yep. all that. But we sell a lot of 200 to 275 grain heads for nine foot, four, three, four to mm-hmm. eight weight rods, and it's because there's not a lot of barrier to entry to spay when you just already have a rod in your closet, yeah. and you're going to put a hundred and twenty dollar skagit line on you know what i mean you can get a running line ahead and a, and a tip essentially three things and you're fishing most situations and you know i know a lot of guys like me, especially like me like i got every tip i can you can imagine be- between stuff i owned before opst and stuff they graciously allowed me to to have to to learn our product line better but you know just stuff i made myself i still end up only fishing two or three like we call it a box of shame i have a box of shame downstairs it's just tips they're all tangled together. It's a mess. Yep. It's a bunch of crap I made or whatever. You know, we've got a pretty low barrier to entry. So where I see our growth is really just more and more of these one-handed anglers. Because this, this is what's fun about this is more and more of these one-handed anglers open up to space-style casting. And then they turn around and they're like, hey, they're I loved it. your lines. I ended up buying a two-handed rod. Yeah. You know, and it's not necessarily always our rods. Some of them don't even know we make rods. But you know, our rods are a little spendy, not a little spendy, yeah. but they're not, not what I'd call entry level. Right. Right. They're more mid price rods. And so guys don't have this barrier to entry before. Like when I was in college and I was learning this, like <laughs> I took the maximum amount of student aid I could one term. It was like three grand. Absolutely didn't need the money, but I needed like, yeah, I've already, you know, I'm going to be paying. I'm still paying it off. I'm sure <laughs> I needed a rod and two lines and a running line and eight tips and you know i wanted the versa tip kit that had all the tips oh, yeah. in it and that was 200 250 bucks or something you know what i mean it was yep. the big barrier to entry for a lot of people at that point now with you know a commando smooth and one tip you could fish the mckenzie all summer hmm. as a swing angler and just have that on a spool and switch it out in between your dry fly line and your nymphing line or whatever and a lot of guys just use a a wait forward line to do both. So now you got two spools. Yeah. One fly box. You know, it's nice. I, I like that there's a, not a big, you know, have to buy a $250 rod and, you yeah. know, all this stuff. And so that's for me where I see the, we're just going to continue to push 
and get more people into single-handed Skagit casting because that tends to be what sparks a lot of folks into the two-handed style yeah, stuff and they'll right. go get an echo rod or one of our rods and uh-huh. I, don't know, I just want to spread the Skagit word for five yeah. years but that's you know we're product wise we're always looking at right now we've got some stuff in development like intermediate tips some lighter sink tips for the micro side like some t you know i don't know what it is but it's not t8 it's a little lighter i have to look at my notes but just stuff that really you know because i mean look at the look at the rod that won at uh iftd before iftd was suspended this year right yep. it was the sage one way oh really yeah and so like you know, it's a great little rod, right? So, like, that's there's, but, but do I want to throw T8 on that? Man, I'd rather throw T5, yeah, T6, T. I don't know. So yeah. we're so we're looking at some of those things where there's more, you know, that we don't call it trout. Trout spay is the industry term. We just took Skagit and made it smaller, so micro Skagit, which oh. overlaps into the trout spay because our micro Skagit is basically the same. You know, and I'll just define that for our customers and, and your audience really quick for us. Like micro Skagit is 300, 275 to 300 grains down. Mm-hmm. You know, we're kind of the first ones to do that. We're all the way down at 150. And so that covers all of your three, four, five, six, seven, eight weights. Okay. How do you know when you, yeah. you know, if you had a rod, say you got a, a six weight uh, Echo or something like that sitting, mm-hmm. how do you know what line to, to match up with that with your guys's with the grain weight and stuff? Well, we're always a little lighter, and that's by design, and I can, you know, go into the design. It's really quick and easy. We, we're we heavier per foot. Um, we're thicker than a line from another company for the same rod, you know, um, just to maximize water load. And then we've got that weight forward aspect. So those three, those three design elements are what allows us to be as much lighter as we are. But I would go to puresgadget.com and check out the line charts um, we had some line chart help uh, recently to to redo these charts from uh, our distributor in Europe, and so we kind of wiggled around our original charts. So they're a little bit more user friendly, and they show kind of like green for the. It will absolutely work. Yellow, it's you know it'll work, but it's not best. And red is like I ah, don't try it. Kind of a color coding on there, and you can always give us a call. Yeah. Um, um, let's see if I remember the number off the top of my head. So you. So you have yeah, some of but, these um, rods. You actually have a, a page at your website that shows a bunch of different rod manufacturers. And the, we and... did. Um, those were older. Those were from about you know four or five years ago or something like that. And so it had like Echo TRs and SRs and stuff on there from like the Echo page, which is great because people still have them, still ask about them. But now they have newer models, and so I don't think they we put those on the um, website. But if you call um, the number at puresketch.com and ask for line recommendations where we don't ask, but you, you hit the, the, the number two, you get me Yeah. pretty much every, every time, unless I'm traveling and, and Wade would, um, cover my calls. But you know, if you're not sure, you just give us a ring or send us an email at info at op com, And we will just answer your question for you. Okay. It takes us two seconds to throw gotcha. it up there. Um, but yeah, the charts online and then you can read it, but you know, it's always good if you have any confusion on the chart, call us and ask us. Sometimes the rods don't just fall right into the chart. You know what I mean? Like look at a, a Sage X. I might put more grain weight on than like a Echo Glass in a 13 foot 7 weight, right? You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah, gotcha. the, some of those things don't, you know, the chart is meant to be thought of as just a guideline. And then if you do are like, gosh, this is really stiff rod or mm, this is really softer, Um Call us and we'll be call us or email us and we'll be glad to help. It takes no time to help someone. Usually the calls last about five minutes. And you can find uh, if they had you know think of any whatever random right because there's a lot of different companies out there right. I mean and, oh man and, yeah. and and are you guys now your rods? I guess we're we're gonna get out of here pretty quick. But what is the process on on your rods? Where are your guys blanks and where is all that happening? Is that uh, well? I mean a lot of it's proprietary, but they are made in Korea. Oh, okay, yeah, in Korea. Um, like another like a lot, a lot. You know, we wanted to. They have a really good reputation for um, quality control. Yep. And, you know, when you go and you have replacement parts for a rod, say, like, a, you know, let's say I broke my 11 and a half foot eight weight. When I get a top section for it, I know it's going to because because of their quality control. I know that that top section is going to almost perfectly match the one I had. It's just it's a clone of it. So there will be no change in the yeah. action of the rod or anything like that, which I really like. 
Um, but yeah, Korea is where they're being made right now. I think there's a lot of uh, rod uh, company. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a hot spot, right? So I mean, many. Yeah. So many. And again, I don't like to throw anybody out there, but just some really high quality companies like ourselves are out there just because of that. They really do have a good process for quality control and stuff like that. But um, yeah, consistency. So. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Okay. And uh, you were, what is, you know, it's, uh, just quickly, again, you mentioned a couple of flies. What is your one uh, skater? What is the fly you love? You use? know, I really like um, just this weird October caddisy looking thing that I like to, well, I mean, I do classics and I do the, the foam monstrosities oh, yeah. and my foam monstrosity thinks pretty little, but I'll either tie it in an October con- caddis configuration or a purple, but it's basically just like a, it almost looks like a, a big elk wing, uh, caddis, but it's got a, uh, a foam wing underneath it. And then the elk hair is on top, kind of like, you know, you see how they did the, uh, Klamath skater, mm. right. It's got like that little, but, but they don't have a foam in the back. I do. And then um, I like to use like a, a space style hackle. I use um, I use rump pheasant rump because I'm not going to waste oh yeah good spay hackle on that. But um, unless it's haggard, but I like to use something stringy. Um, R O P S T um, ostrich finds its way into my skaters here and there too, just to give it some wiggle. Anything that makes it look alive. But then I go back to one of my favorite anglers was Harry Lemire, mm-hmm. um, and the you know his the Lemire's caddis and the grease liner are two oh, yeah. always favorites and I mean I grease line it I I'm useful in the fly oh, the leader the sink tip I mean not the sink tip the floating tip yeah. like if I got a 12 foot floating tip on there I've useful in my floating oh, wow. tip I've used useful in my 10 foot leader everything I grease yeah. it there you yeah go. so those are my favorites you know it just gives me a little bit of variety gotcha Gotcha. Okay. And, and what about a tip? Any other tips you want to throw out there? Is there one that comes to mind as far as skating? Um, for skating, just put your sink tips in your glove box, lock it, do whatever. It's the same as I teach people that are like, I really want to learn how to swing, but you know, I, I yeah. it, leave your nymphing rod at home, leave your other stuff at home and just skate Yeah. because you don't have the confidence in it until you move a fish and even a trout, you know what I mean? Even yeah. if you hook a trout on your, then I mean, because then you're going to start doing it at weird times when you're just kind of bored. Trout spay, you're going to throw on a 10-foot floating tip and a little October caddis and catch 17-inch cut. You know what I mean? There's oh, yeah. fish that really do move for these flies. And so my, my tip really is just to have some confidence in it. Get, I, we call it harnessing your inner Todd Hirano because I <laughs> think he will tr- he'll try he'll to skate as thing. much as he can. Just, yeah, just, yeah. You just dedicate yourself to it and throw some dedication at it. Because that's the only way you really learn anything, right? Yeah, so, that's yeah, great. that's my tip. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great one. And that, and that Richard Harrington was on the. the oh yeah, the, he's the, awesome. Yeah, yeah, he he I broke. Love Richard. He said uh, a similar thing. He basically said, "Yeah, just put it away, put it away for the season, and just just skate as much." Dedicate as you can. it. Yeah, dedicate. Dedicate it. it, and it might get frustrating, and you might. I'm a, you know, I can be a glass half empty guy at times, and if you ever talk to my wife, she'll always likes to tell the story when I threw my rod in the river and yeah. walked away when guys were catching fish on the other side of it. So I, I, right. I, have, I have, I have character flaws there too, but <laughs> you know, it, it can be, it can be daunting. There's times when, you know, there'll be guys catching fish around you. And, but I mean, I'm telling you what that day on the run, no one was going to catch a fish unless they were skating a fly huh. and Kinsley landed the nicest. It'll be in the, I don't have video of it, but the photo will be in the video. Oh, oh yeah. Where, still, where, but, will it be? Where, where do you post these, uh, these videos and stuff? Okay. So, um, um, OPST pure Skagit, OPST colon pure Skagit on YouTube. And then of course, Facebook, Instagram, you can find it. We're not on TikTok yet. I'm not sure if I'm I'm not sure if I'm hip enough for TikTok, but um, we definitely are all on the standard social medias and we'll post and new stuff coming all the time. We try to update our content as much as possible. Um, So, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, so you guys are uh, you guys are all over the place, and maybe even getting into some short videos on TikTok, uh, maybe as well this year. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. That's a lot of content. The guys that are successful on TikTok post a lot of content, and that's yeah. I don't know if I want to dive that far into it, yeah, but yeah, in general, we just try to keep everybody informed via our social, and then um, you can go to our website also and enter your email address if you just. I don't. We don't typically send videos out, but um, no notifications for new product releases oh yeah or well what do you got for new pro- stock products a- anything in the next uh, six months or so new coming out for you uh, not, 
the pro- I don't know. We we'll see. Yeah, we got maybe. we got some stuff we have to test. Yeah. Before we make any commitments outward, but there, yeah. it's the 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 prototypes are in route as we speak. So as soon as yeah, um, we do have some stuff that'll probably be coming soon. Okay. Just because that's the nature of the beast. You got to have something. But you know, we do always have some stuff working um, in our brains on on uh, product development for sure. We got internal discussions. So on your rods, I mean, your lines obviously are, are standard. You know, you got your, but you know, rods wise, are you guys always every year coming out with a new rod, or are you sticking with those for a little while? We're sticking with these for a little while, um, but we again are looking at expanding, maybe looking at new materials. Who knows? We yeah. just we like to keep our options open. Um, you know, our rods are pretty hard to. I mean, you know, we've got we've got recoil seracoil coil recoil guides on all the rods, so you can bend the rod the the, oh, right. the guide down to the blank and spring it back up. So I mean, huh. some of this stuff on our rods is going to be hard to hard to upgrade. Yeah. Hard to upgrade and hard to make better. You know, Ed's Ed's design on these rods make them just. I haven't had a single person come back and say I don't like the way this rod no. casts. You know what I mean? No, Which, no. And I and again. Yeah. Of course, they might not be as hundred percent honest with me, but you know they're they're honest with my ambassadors and other friends of mine off away from me for sure. And um, yeah, yeah, we've gotten a lot of really good feedback on those. What, so what, we, what, if it ain't broke, we ain't gonna fix it. But if we can add to it, we definitely will. And and on your team, I mean, you've got Ed back there. He's kind of like the uh, the the mm-hmm. mad scientist, right? Yeah. Where nobody nobody Absolutely. sees. <laughs> nobody sees. Yeah, but, I know he's kind of on his own schedule and does his own thing, which is awesome. We don't mind yeah. that at all. But yeah, he definitely is kind of in the in the background, and we definitely do you know work with him for video for instructional stuff and definitely all the product development we have you know big conversations on the phone or whatever we need to do to to kind of do that stuff but then everything gets distributed out to um us and then and, and who's uh, and who's on your who's actually on the 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 team for you know the guy paid employees with with Skagit now with you guys um so myself uh Wade uh Luplo who's uh like kind of an, like an office manager but definitely a very good angler, good two handed caster. Was uh-huh. a guide over for striped bass in Illinois and caught trout in Colorado, and worked for uh, Waters West, as a matter of fact, okay. up there. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. has a very diverse knowledge of the of fisheries and this industry. So he's a great addition. James, my boss, obviously is still at the helm, and then we've got our office staff that we had before. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's kind of where we're kind of where we're running. We we run with our ambassadors. They do a lot of stuff for us. We've we got uh, Captain John McCluskey. He's out oh, yeah. of um, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Dry fly John on oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Instagram. Yeah, no, we had yeah, John so. on. We had John on. For yeah, sure. he's yeah. great. Yeah, he's great. And so he's one of our ambassadors. Okay. And you know, he's out of either Georgia or up there in Bristol Bay. Yeah, he's back home now, I think, as the weather has turned. But then we've got uh, Dave Pinchkowski is one of our ambassadors, and you know, one of Ed's best friends, yep. and just an amazing angler and human being. So we get a lot of feedback and yep. uh, stuff and like that out of him. And, you know, we've got, uh, Lael from, uh, uh, flyguide.com. Okay. And so he is a new ambassador and he's about as fishy as they get. Uh-huh. Um, and very multi-talented, not only just as a guide and an angler and an instructor, but also media wise runs a lot of media. Um, Kinsley Scott and Ricky Davidson are a couple out of Missoula. Um, Kinsley was like our women's ambassador, but we've kind of talked about that and she's as good as any, like, yeah. do we, do we, we wanna, do we want to have a women's category? Where right. We have, she's as good as any male yep. rowing, casting, landing a fish under five she landed her steelhead on a lighter rod in under five minutes um you know she's a beast and then her boyfriend ricky davidson another really good um asset for us he grew up in the shadow of like bob miser al burr mike canny these are the guys that taught this kid how to fly cat or how to how to spay cats so i mean we're pretty blessed right now and always looking to expand when we've got folks that are you know, yeah, we can find something that's mutually beneficial for all of us and they kind of meet our criteria, but that's kind of who's running the, yep. the crew right now. Um, cool. Yeah. Cool. That's OPSC in a nutshell, I think. All right. All right. Well, James, I'll, I'll let you get out here. Just uh, a pure yeah, sketch. Man, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been another fun one. We'll have to circle back around maybe, maybe in uh, maybe less than two years to see how your uh, things are going, but it sounds like, 
sounds like things haven't uh you've got a few new lines from you know two years right you guys have put some new things out there yeah we put out the commando smooth integrated line the commando groove um uh intermediate and then we've got the rods and so in two years that's quite a lot that is a lot um yeah, yeah that's we're gonna keep trying to we're gonna keep trying to do it if we can if there's more stuff and the smooth and the groove the smooth and the groove it sounds like you're on some sort of a like a, a jazz uh theme is that, is that where you're... <laughs> jazz trio yeah <laughs> yeah 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 smooth, smooth like groove it. okay all right james hey it thanks th- thanks again man we'll, we'll check back with you soon uh, dave i appreciate it i hope you guys have a great day so there you go if you want to find all the show notes and all the links we covered just go to wetflyswing.com slash 163 Please check out the uh, new fly shop if you get a chance. It'd be great if you could stop by. I love, uh, I love the fact that it's, uh, it's. We got a fly shop. Uh, I guess technically it's not really all there, but we got some merch and we're having some good times over there. So, um, if you want to pick up a hat or a hoodie or something else pretty cool and support the show, you can go over to uh, wetflyswing.com/shop right now and, and check out what we have. I'd love to. I'd love to see a, uh, a ring. Uh, <laughs> it's not it's not a ton of money over there, but it does support the show. It's like buying a cup of coffee for me, that sort of thing. But I love, uh, you know, obviously seeing some people in the store checking it out. So I want to thank you uh, for that. And also thank you again for stopping by today to check out the show. I'm uh, looking forward to catching up this soon. I hope to maybe see you on the river or in the online store. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com. And if you found this episode helpful, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. 